start a new online game, I feel unreasonably anxious. I feel like I'm doing something wrong, that I'm missing something. I feel like people are watching me and judging me for making really silly mistakes. What I normally do is to go for a video like this one just to feel a tiny bit more comfortable. Hey, it's Avi Cats. The summer is on its way and with Final Fantasy XIV launching on Xbox, there are so many new players coming to the game. I thought this would be a great time to make a video like this. If you are new to Final Fantasy XIV, first of all, welcome to the game. You might have noticed already, this game is great for people who are new to the genre. It does a great job at easing people into the content without overwhelming them. The story dungeons and trials slowly teach you the game mechanics and the community is generally really helpful to newer players. However, there are some very common beginner mistakes I keep seeing. We're gonna talk about those today. Probably the biggest mistake you can make in Final Fantasy XIV is not reading your your tooltips. Everyone gets lazy from time to time. You might just want to click on your skills and find out how they work just by trial and error. That doesn't really work in Final Fantasy XIV, unfortunately. Even if you read the tooltips when you get the skills, some of those skills change as you level up, so you have to keep an eye on them, keep track of them. Your rotation will constantly get more confusing. Get used to it. The second mistake is not doing your role in the party. In Final Fantasy XIV, there are three roles. There's DPS, there's healers, and there are tanks. Each role has their own responsibility in the party, there is no escaping it. You have to play as your role. As a tank, your responsibility is to keep the aggro on you. Embrace your fate and become the meatiest meat shield. That doesn't mean you won't be dealing any damage, of course. Every role in this game is expected to deal damage. You only have some extra responsibilities to worry about. You are a spicy DPS. It's the same thing for healers too. Your responsibility is to keep your party alive and DPS in your downtime. Unless you are me, then you'll constantly forget you're a healer and give your tank a heart attack. Oopsies. Sorry. I'm blaming Square Enix for making White Mage so fun to DPS with. Your party won't be dying at all times, so you'll have lots of free time to deal damage. The enemies can hurt your party if they're already dead. As a DPS player, your responsibility is to... To bring the good vibes, I guess, I don't know. Just be there and keep hitting things. You really can't mess it up, it's really simple. Another common mistake I keep seeing newer players do is buying everything from the market board. Don't do that. Seize immediately. You are getting scammed. You might even be getting scammed by me because I too sell vendor items sometimes now that I think about it. It's true, we are gamers. Being lazy is in our nature. You're lying if you ever say you've never ordered food when you could just go outside and grab it yourself. But here's the thing. If you're buying NPC items from the market board, there's a high chance you are getting robbed by whoever is selling that item. It's a common sneaky trick to buy NPC items and sell them in the market board for outrageous prices. When I say outrageous prices, I really mean it. Some people sell those NPC music scrolls for over 200,000 gil. The saddest part is that it actually works. Selling NPC items is a good way of making money. There are some players who actually buy these without realizing they can get these way cheaper from the NPCs. One way to avoid this is checking the NPC prices before or you buy stuff. And don't worry, you don't have to travel all the way to the NPCs to check the prices. All you have to do is to hover your mouse over the item and you should be able to see how much it sells at the NPCs. Then you can accept your fate and buy it anyway, even though you know you're getting scammed just because you're being lazy. I only wish you to feel the weight of knowledge upon your scaly shoulders. Do you feel it now? Good. Something I wish I knew when I first started Final Fantasy XIV is the yellow quests are, they are not worth your time. You won't need them for extra experience or gil, you should be good just by doing the main story quest line. If you wanna level up faster, you can do some daily roulettes, that should be more than enough, trust me. There are some exceptions of course, there are some really cool special unmarked side quests, but in general, as a new player, you should just ignore the yellow quests. If you try to take every single quest you see on your map, you will never finish the main story. Let's say you kinda got tired of the main story and wanna explore some of the side content. Just stick to the stuff marked with blue markers. These are the only side quests that matter. I have to include this one because this is something I did in the past as a sprout myself. I had no idea that's not what you're supposed to do. Do not queue into savage or extreme contents. You will not find a party. That queue will not pop 
ever. You'll be sitting on your seats, rotting for the rest of your life. Even if a miracle happens and the cube pops, people will most likely leave the duty immediately and you're gonna be really confused. Why would they leave, right? That makes no sense. Well, <laughs> extreme and savage content in 14 can be pretty extreme and savage as name suggests. These are the type of content that require some proper coordination in your party. They tend to be more challenging than regular trials and raids. They usually take a lot longer to clear than a regular duty. So players don't just queue into them, it takes a bit more preparation. Unless you have a near full party already, it's gonna take forever for the queue to pop. And even if you queue into that duty, some people might leave because they were not ready for that trial. Challenge. I sometimes find myself in these extreme trials while doing my daily mentor roulettes and while it is doable, you'll have a much easier time finding a party for these types of content in the party finder. You can also unsync most of these trials if you are running for the loot only. I had no idea you could farm those trials unsync when I first started this game and it's surprisingly such a common mistake. It's a game changer once you find out those farm parties in the party finder. It doesn't matter if you're a new player or a veteran player, there's one Hunting every Final Fantasy XIV player does. They die. It's inevitable. It happens. It's life. We all make mistakes. The good thing about video games is that you don't actually remain dead after you die. You get resurrected by a sleep deprived healer main instead. When you die in a duty, the game will ask you if you'd like to return to the starting point. You should never click OK when you have people who can resurrect you in your party. If you do, you'll get resurrected at the start of the dungeon and it will lock you out of the battle. You really don't want that. Just wait for your healers to resurrect you. After you get resurrected, you're briefly immune to most mechanics but only until you take an action. This includes all the actions including your self-healing, so be careful. You should wait one or two seconds before you start hitting the boss again unless you need that DPS for a DPS check of course, so your healers have time to heal you. A few seconds of patience can save your life in this game. I know you are strong, you are mighty, you are feral. There might be some rare situations your huge muscles and big DPS might be a bit of a problem. When you are running dungeons and doing wall to wall pulls, some of those mobs might turn around and say, actually, that cat girl looked at me weird, I wanna hit that one instead, not the tank. And honestly, it's not a huge problem, it happens pretty often. It becomes a big deal only if you start panicking. If you accidentally get aggro as a DPS or a healer, don't panic and start running away. Just pull the ads into your tank's AoV. Once the tank's AoV hits it, it should aggro the tank again. Technically, this shouldn't really happen but it happens. People can get distracted and make mistakes sometimes. I know I make a lot. You might as well be a good teammate and make things easier for everyone else. And then once you make mistakes, they will adjust for you. The power of friendship will keep us alive. Or that's what I like to believe sometimes. You got it. And these were some of the most common mistakes I keep seeing new players make. I hope you find it helpful. I was probably one of the most clueless sprout when I first started this game. Learn from my mistakes. Don't make the mistakes the Sprout AV did and let me know in the comments section down below because I'm curious. What was the biggest mistake you made in Final Fantasy XIV as a Sprout? What was that one mistake that you did that makes you cringe today? Because I know you have one. Share them in the comments section so the new players can read and avoid those. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with a special thanks to the channel members who support this channel. Thank you so much. I can't wait for the new expansion. This is gonna be a great summer. I love your guts and as always, I'll see you in my next video. Stay cozy!